and has recently become a bishop in, in his denomination, the Pentecostal Assemblies of Zimbabwe, uh, because others recognize his leadership as well, and he's mentoring young leaders. And uh, so, brother, I just want to invite you to come, and uh, kids can go. God nice bless them. Around. Head on down. Bless you, brother. Praise the Lord. Amen. You got a your oh, fantastic. It's um, good to to be here uh, and uh, be with uh, all of you, good people. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. How many are excited to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Fantastic. You do that. I want to take the hour that I requested for. Don't respond, I would take an hour because I'd, uh, I was trying to negotiate for an hour from pastor. <laughs> 2009, he came to Zimbabwe and uh, we did ministry together and did the privilege of baptizing 42 people uh, in one baptismal service. That must have been a unique experience. So we are thankful that we can reciprocate and come and minister in, in this ministry. We hope that as we challenge each other with the word of God, God will touch our hearts. Amen. Amen. So I wanted to talk about uh, going into the world. I want to talk about the going lifestyle. A lot of uh, what God desires for his people is that which happens away from where his people gather. Amen. Amen. The place of uh, gathering like this is a place of experiencing the glory of God. But the place of going is a place of expressing the glory of God. So my, my thoughts today are basically to challenge the church of God, to challenge believers to go and become fruitful. Because when you look at the word of God, uh, John 15, 16, John 15, 16, Jesus said, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go. So our key, our key word there is going. We were appointed so that we might go and bear fruit. That's, that's our appointment. <laughs> and, and, and the glory of God for us as believers is, is, is in the going. Because when you look before that in, in um, John 15 verse 8, he says, this is to my father's glory that you bear much fruit. So God is glorified when you and I, as his people, go into our world and bear fruit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, but here's the thing about, the, the exp about experiencing God or about the glory of God. When you look at the Mount of Transfiguration in Matthew chapter 17, when Jesus was, uh, was uh, unveiled in a, in a new way, in a different way to, to Peter, John, and James, Peter says, it's good to be here. It was a place of glory, so Peter desired to stay in the place of glory. But Jesus began to express to them the need that after the transfiguration experience, there's need to go to those who haven't had that experience in order to express ourselves. Hallelujah. This was the big thing with the, with the Jerusalem church. That after the, 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 the glory of God came in the form of the Holy Spirit and they experienced the Pentecost the desire of the people was to remain in that good, nice atmosphere. But it took a persecution to disperse the church. Why? Because the glory of God is found in the going. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, church of God. So we are created to go. We are created to bear fruit. And the process of bearing fruit is in the going. There's no way I can uh, express the fruit of the kingdom of God by staying among believers. Remember, we are the light of the world. We are the salt of the world. There's no need for salt in the salt shaker. 
There is no need for light where there is light. Salt is needed in a place where there is need to preserve, to bring test, and, and, and to cause, to influence, and to affect. Light is needed when there is, where there is darkness. So the glory of God is in the going. But the second thing about the glory of God, the glory of God is for the growing. The more you grow in the Lord, in the process of going to do ministry, the more you experience more of God. Hallelujah. And fruit bearing brings glory to God. Friends, may may God challenge us this morning to be going Christians. So in order to bring my point home, I am, I am going to just share with you some of the go commands of Jesus Christ. Instances where the Lord Jesus Christ used the word go as a way of giving instruction to his disciples. And we're going to take those instances and apply them into our day-to-day lives and say to ourselves, here are some of the instances, here are some of the places where you and I as a Christian, we need to be going. We need to go and do something. We need to go and be something to the glory of God. Hallelujah. Now, when you you look at, uh, at these commandments. The first one that I like is go and be reconciled. The Bible says to us when you come to the altar and you realize you have got something against your friend, against your neighbor, against your fellow believer, for the glory of God to be expressed, first go and be reconciled to your brother. How many of us today, we come and gather in the house of God, but there are hurts and disappointments and situations of animosity, one against the other. But if we're going to bear fruit for the kingdom of God in the process of going, we need to understand the principle to go and be reconciled. It's very interesting to know that the most uh, unforgiving, the most uh, people that, that get hurt the most and don't move are believers. No wonder why in the book of Proverbs it says, a brother who is offended is hard to gain back like a fortified seat. I'm paraphrasing it. But having experienced the, the glory of God, Having experienced the goodness of God, having been impacted by God, may God give you the desire to go and be reconciled. Remember, you are not going alone. You are going with him. Because Moses says, if you don't show us your grace, if you don't show us your presence, don't send us from here. But we are sent from this church into the world because we have experienced the presence, the glory of God. Go and be reconciled. Every heart, if not carefully dealt with, becomes a prison. But the challenge with unforgiveness, resentment, and all those things is you become a prisoner to your own self. What is Jesus teaching us here? He's saying relationship precedes ministry. Hallelujah. It's no use to minister and minister and minister if our relationships in the house of God with other believers, even with our relatives that are non-believers, are not in place. Hallelujah. So as I was sneaking into some of your pastor's teaching on on the glory of God, I really felt led to, 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 to challenge you to understand that spiritual sincerity requires social sensitivity. Can't be spiritually sincere without being socially sensitive. For we don't live in, a, in an island of, of Christians only, but we live in an island of, of other people. We are surrounded by social systems where the Bible is commanding us to go and carry the glory of God into our social context. 
Hallelujah. To go and carry the glory of God into our families. Some of you are going to be hosting your families during Christmas. Some of those people are not even Christians. They don't even buy to your values. But the command that you have, the mandate that you have is when you are with with those people, you are a carrier of the glory of God. They must experience the evidence that you have made with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, church. Hallelujah, church. (laughs) Remember I said if you say amen, if you give it back to me, it's going to be a short sermon. If you don't, I'll go on and on and on and on. (laughs) Hallelujah. So Jesus gave commands. And the other command, the other go command that he gave is go the extra mile. People that have been infused, that have encountered God, they go beyond the call of duty. He says, if someone forces you to go one mile, go with them two miles. The first mile, according to the, to, the, to the principles of that time, when you're talking of going the extra mile, whenever uh, you, uh, you are walking or a soldier was walking, a Roman soldier, and they're carrying a burden and they meet you, they would force you to carry the burden. You're just walking along the road, you meet with them, they say, okay, carry this that I have to carry, and you carry for them. So Jesus says, okay, you go the first mile, that they are forcing you to go. At the end of that first mile, don't say, here is your burden. Go another mile. Because the first mile, it was under duress. He had no choice. He had no control. But when you start going the second mile, you are now going the mile of the glory of God. You are now going the mile that this person looks at you and says, I thought this was painful to you. I thought this was torture. How come you're going a little bit more? How come you're doing a little bit more? Which means you and I as God's people in our workplaces, with our families, wherever we are, we need to learn the principle of doing more than the call of duty. Hallelujah. We need to to learn the principle of just doing a little bit better. If somebody says, oh, prepare a meal for me. Don't just prepare a sandwich. Prepare a starter, a main course, and a dessert. Now you're going an extra mile. And they look at you and they say, wow, I thought I would force myself on you. I thought I'd impose myself on you. Why are you going this extra mile? I can tell you that this past two days, wow. Especially yesterday. There was so much meat, I think I said uh, to Pastor and his family, you guys are going to have this meat for the next week. (laughs) So much. He went an extra mile. So much. God bless you. God bless you. (laughs) Hallelujah. So that's what happens when we encounter God. That's what happened when, what happens when we have to express the glory of God. We go beyond the call of duty. And without God, it's painful. Without the enabling grace of God, it's not good to do more than what you're required to do. But with God, all things are possible. The third go command, go talk to your offender. I like this one. If your brother sins against you, go show him his fault. I thank you for that, amen. When you get offended by a brother or a sister in the church, who do you tell? <laughs> Thank you for that response. <laughs> when I get offended by, 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 by uh, others in the kingdom, who do I tell? But Jesus says, you people, go to that person that has offended you and have that Difficult, candid talk. Remember the premise of this teaching is that I have chosen you so that you may go and bear fruit. And by your fruit, my, my father will be glorified. And I, I want you to have this picture. I want you to have a triangle picture that 
whatever I do for my brother there, credit does not go to him. Credit goes to God. Because apart from the glory of God, apart from experiencing God, apart from salvation, I cannot do what I am doing to him. So I go to him and do something extraordinary. He looks at me and he says, wow, this can only be God. Have you noticed that even those, that you, who, those who don't believe in God, they still say, oh my God. Because when something out of this world happens, there is no way to think about it except to think about God. So my brother, my sister, when you have got something against a sister in the Lord, go talk to your offender. Don't broadcast it everywhere else. Go talk to them. It is to the Father's what? glory that you talk to those that are against you. Go talk to them. Speak out your mind. Don't hold back. Tell them their fault. And make sure when you tell them their fault, the grace of God is part of everything that you're doing. Understanding that you are a career of the presence of God. Did you know that Where you are concerned as a Christian, the reputation of God is at stake. You did not hear me. You did not hear me. Where you are concerned as a Christian, the reputation of God is at stake. If if we just did something small here, CBC will have something to put on prime time news. Or in the front page of the paper. Why? Because, because of who we are, because of identifying with God, whatever we do that is not so good, it's credited to our faith. Hallelujah. So it's very important for us to understand God requires us to be faithful. Another go command Go home to your family and tell them how much the Lord has done for you. I like this one. I like this one. Now it's talking about witnessing. This is the man who was, who was, who was living in the graveside and, and a lot of things were, ha- were happening to him and people were trying to restrain him from being harmful to himself. He had encountered Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ cast out demons from this man. He encountered the glory of God. And after that, he says, Jesus, this is so nice. I want to go with you. And Jesus says, go tell your family. Are we telling our family? Are we telling our families how much Jesus has done for us? Friends, sometimes we don't need to say much. You don't need the big theological uh, things. You don't need, we like the four spiritual laws. But there are times when you don't need those. Tell your story. So this man legend wanted to follow Jesus. Jesus said, don't follow me. Go tell your family. There are people in this house. What you need to do is to just find time, this Christmas time, to go tell your family how much the Lord has done for you. To go tell your grandchildren how much the Lord has sustained you this far. To go tell your own children how much the Lord has sustained you this far. Go. Sometimes, as Christians, the last place we want to go is to our family. We want to run around with other people, with other believers. But remember, remember this command. You are commanded, I am commanded to go back to my family with the story of Jesus Christ. And what a beautiful season we are entering into, the season of Christmas. To be able to sit down with our families when they come to our houses and tell them how much the Lord has done for us. For sitting before me here, every one of us, you have a story to tell. A story to tell about the goodness of God. A story to tell about the grace of God. A story to tell about the glory of God. Go share your story. Because your testimony, my brother, my sister, will change someone. 
Go home to your family. Think about those people that are dear to you. Think about your children. Think about your grandchildren. Think about your, your, your siblings, your brothers, your sisters, your cousins. Go tell your story. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's, it's reported that the Decapolis or the region of 10 cities began to know about the, the Lord Jesus Christ and that the, the whole story of, of the Decapolis, Decapolis is, is a word that you read in the New Testament. Don't think that I'm, I'm educated. It's just a word that I find in the, in the Bible. <laughs> the people in the Decapolis, in the, in, the, in the region of 10 cities, got to know about Jesus Christ and it's attributed to this man. Wow. Hallelujah. Remember the Samaritan woman. When she encountered Jesus Christ, what did she do? She ran into the city to go tell her story. This world will be a better world when each and every Christian decides to say, I need to go to my family for my family needs my story. Friends, our families need our stories. The reason why our families need our stories is because our families know us. If I go back to my family, they know how I grew up. They know the things that, that I, I, I was doing before I came to Christ. They know my, my level of education before I came to Christ. And to have these kinds of opportunities, it says to them, this is God. He has done this and it's marvelous in our eyes. Because they know that apart from God, I wouldn't be where I am today. Go share your story. Your family needs your story. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many are going to share their stories with their families? I have one, two, three, four, five. If everyone raises their hands, then we'll finish the sermon. The gospel is about families. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. You and your household. The gospel is about families. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. The gospel is about our families. May God help us. Is, am I allowed to touch this? <laughs> yes, it's open. It's not open, so I can drink it. Fantastic. It's good. <laughs> I won't tell you what I call this because some of you will laugh at me, so I won't tell you. Go deal with your kingdom obstacles. Hallelujah. You know, the whole process of going does not end there because when you talk about going, when you talk about going, most of us, we start thinking about the obstacles. We start thinking about the challenges that stand in our way. But what does Jesus say? Go and sell everything. The idea here, friends, is not in the selling. The idea is in that this, this, this rich young Luda's possessions had become hindrances. And obstacles, an obstacle to him entering into the kingdom of God. So Jesus says, go get rid of these things. And when you are done getting rid of these things, it will be easier for you to enter the kingdom of God. Brother, sister, what's hindering you from the full expression of your faith? What's hindering you from fully expressing or enjoying the glory of God? Hallelujah. Some of us is culture. Some is a desire to be dignified. Some is just a feeling that my at my age. Some is the resources that we have. Others is the resources that we don't have. But Jesus is saying, that which is standing in your way, God deal with it. God deal with your kingdom obstacle. So you become a better person in expressing the glory of God. I like this one. Go do likewise. They are asking Jesus Christ who is a, who is a good person, who is my good neighbor, da, 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 a big story. You know, I'm just giving you a tip of the iceberg. I will give you the full iceberg some other time. And they say, okay, this man was mugged by the roadside and this one did not help, this one did not help, but this one helped. Who was a good neighbor? The one that helped. Jesus said, go and do likewise. And what are we learning there? 
we are learning the principle of saying we must follow the good example. Go follow a good example. The Bible is replete full of good examples that you and I must follow. And Jesus said, go follow that good example. We, 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 we have an opportunity, we have neighbors, we have people that are in need. And when we respond to the needs of our friends, we are following the good example. So go follow that example. And the final one for today, which is the major one, go make disciples. There's no need for us to do anything else if we are not taking this command. We go to the lost. We go to the lost. We go make disciples. Hallelujah. There are dangers related to that. I'm sending out among lambs, like lambs among among the wolves, but go. Why? Because this is why we are there as a church. As we go, we experience the greatness of God. As we go, we express the glory of God. And as we go, we extend the grace of God. Church of God, I did not choose myself. You did not choose myself. He chose us so that we may go and bear fruit. The fruit is to his glory. So, as we go, Under the anointing of God, in the presence of God, we bear fruit. And as we bear fruit, God is glorified. Father, we thank you this afternoon. We thank you for your grace, for your peace, and for your love. We thank you, God, for this church, the call that you have placed upon this church, different areas where they must go. I pray that your accompanying presence will continue. It is your people. As we go into different aspects of our city and our world, we remind ourselves that we are carriers of the glory of God. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, God's people. Amen.